Pray with me. Lord, let us be uh, people that are running to the altar, understanding that your arms are open wide. And for each one of us in this place that um, hurting, need your healing, need your help, we just need to praise you for what you're doing in our life. Um, may we just race uncontrollably uh, into your presence. For you are uh, the one who heals, the one who gives hope, the one who helps. And it's in your name that I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being part of us here at Get Well. Because we're at a brand new year, uh, 2019. I'm so glad I made it. And so glad uh, to be part of uh, what God's going to do here in this place. It's going to be the best year ever. Uh, we realize that uh, New Year's bring resolutions. Uh, I don't want you to hear that word resolution today. I want you to hear the word priority. Two things I ask of you uh, as we begin. The first is to look on the back of your sermon outline. Because uh, there is uh, information and in how we can communicate to you. Uh, we're having so many new members, so many guests. We want to be able to communicate to you and with you uh, things concerning inclement weather. I mean, we might have two days that stay at the same temperature. Uh, we might need to communicate you concerning emergency, uh, anything. So please, let us have that contact information or follow along with our electronic email with Crosswire. You see all of that. The second thing I'm asking of you uh, to make as a priority is for you to be here the next five weeks. This is a six-week sermon series. Uh, you're here today. Uh, do not think, well, I'm going to take a cut or I'm not going to be here. Make it a priority. Uh, you're going to hear where we are, as Jonathan said, and where we're going. You're going to hear about strategy. You're going to hear about vision. You're going to hear about what God has put in our path and saying to us, walk this way. We need your prayer support. We need your encouragement. It is important for us as a family, a body of believers, to be part of this as we move forward. Uh, today, uh, we begin this sermon series of MOVE. It has been in the hopper. It has been in the chamber uh, since summer. Uh, we realize that this is so important for us. Uh, and why are you calling it MOVE? Well, you and I as humans, we are designed to move. We skip, we step, we jump, we flinch, we blink. Uh, we uh, run, uh, some of us dance, some of us think we can dance. But we're always moving. It's an innate instinct for us to always react or to respond. Becky and my uh, youngest granddaughter is 13 months old. She is the quickest of all eight. When you go to wipe her mouth or wipe her nose, she's as quick as a cat. <laughs> we try to slip up on her, <laughs> only to be deterred with boom. She is so quick. It's an innate response in us to react or to respond. What we say about us physically is the same truth for us spiritually. Just like Caroline, we move with a reaction. What is true is there. So let me ask a hard question, a good question right here at the beginning of 2019. And the question is this, for you, are you further along in your spiritual journey today than you were a year ago today? What about this? Are you further along in your spiritual journey today than when you first said yes to Jesus Christ? In our culture today, 
uh, a mindset a lot of the times is that, well, I've made that decision so I can dust my hands. Everything is okay. I don't have to do anything else. And we enter into a time of complacency or apath apathy, even to the point where as a church that we attend, we are never challenged in order for us to grow because we're just satisfied with where we are. Last week... We had 17. Today we had one. The challenge for them, the challenge for us, is that we will continue to move in our next step of spiritual growth. For us to have a core value within ourselves that I'm going to grow in my Christ likeness with the Lord. If we ever have that mindset, that I'm satisfied, I'm going to be complacent or apathetic, that is unacceptable here at Getwell. Unacceptable because we want to understand that you may make a conscious decision that I'm okay right where I am, don't bother me, I'm just going to live my, my journey right where I am and never grow deeper in my faith. But let me tell you that we as leaders here, we take on the responsibility to always, always, challenge you with a, the, the process of going one step deeper in your growth. Our charge is to provide a spiritual pathway for that to happen for you. All we can do, our responsibility is to offer it for you because we're praying that you're going to say, yes, I, I want to go just a little bit deeper. I want to go deeper in my faith and have a desire to know more of God. We will not grow weary in offering that pathway. Just understand that. It was Nelson Mandela, you know, from South Africa, that spent time in prison. He was fighting against apartheid. And he made this statement about physical life. I think it's very applicable to spiritual life. Listen to what he said. He said, there is no passion to be found playing small in settling for a life that is less than you are capable of living. I mean, I've been there. I know what it's like just to go through the motions. I know what it's like just to come to church. I know what it's like just to check the box. But we want so much more of what we're capable of living because I don't want any of us to get to the point when we get to the end of this one and only life that the Lord has given us and look back and think, I wonder what. Think with me. What would it be like as a body of believers for everyone who calls the place home for us to be growing in the Lord? Can you imagine what it would be like? You know, we can sit around the table. We can discuss that. We can talk about it and assume or presume what that might be like. But we're tired of the talk. We're tired of the assumptions. We want to see what it's going to be like lived out. And it's going to take a desire on each one of our parts to say, yeah, I want to go further in my walk today than I was yesterday, but not as far as I'm going to be tomorrow. And so it's a constant movement and a growth path that we're going to continue to follow. Well, in order for us to do that, in order for us to grow, we have to know where we start. What's the beginning point? Well, the beginning point for us to say we are here uh, begins with something that's going to be rolled out next week. Jonathan's going to talk about this in, in his sermon. I'll give you more details about it, but it's a resource known as a survey. I'm asking you, we're asking you, give us 15 minutes of your day. Take this survey. Help us know where we are as a church. Our staff, our elders, our board of directors, our leadership, they've already you know, are in the process of taking this uh, for us to kind of understand where we are spiritually, for us to know what growth steps we need as a church. 
After this survey, uh, we will get a report back and it will define where we are as a body of believers. There'll be four different categories of a report that we will receive. Uh, you'll see these categories on the screen. Uh, exploring Christ, growing in Christ, close to Christ, Christ-centered. Let me explain these. Exploring Christ is this. It might be people who are just getting to know who Christ is. They are trying to understand what Christian faith is all about. These are people in this category who have a basic belief in God, but they're unsure about Christ's role in uh, their life. So it's, they're just exploring Christ. Uh, the second category is growing in Christ. These are people who have a personal relationship with God. But for some amazing re reason, they are understanding the benefits of what it means to read God's word and to uh, be in small groups and to understand what God is doing in their life. And so they're beginning to grow in their faith. And then the third category is close to Christ. These are followers of Christ who say, I depend on Christ every day. I, I read his word. I, I pray to him. I ask him for wisdom. I help. I ask him for help in time of need in my life. These are people that are close to Christ. And the fourth category is Christ-centered these are followers of Jesus who identify their relationship with Christ as the most important relationship in their life. As followers of Christ, you and I, we need to know where we are. Where are we in any of these categories? We can't assume that we know because we have to have critical evidence for us to understand. I mean, for all the things that we can count in the church setting... We can count how many people go on mission trips, how many people are in worship today, how many people are in the children's building, how many people are in student ministry. We can talk about how, how, what the financial gifts are. We can make a spreadsheet that is so big that can count, 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 count. What we cannot count is where we are spiritually. So that's where we need your help. We need your help just to go in on this survey and to take it so we can get this report. Why? It will help us know where we are, where we're divided in these four categories. And I'll talk about that in just a minute. But it'll also help us put in place steps for us to grow deeper in our faith. Consider this. Just an example. Let's go in the weeds for a minute. Consider that we as a body of believers think that we are pretty much uh, growing in Christ's body of believers. That we are just learning more and more and more and we're trying to understand that. We may think that that's where we are, presume that's where we are. But when the survey comes back, the results show us that we are Christ-centered. The majority of us are Christ-centered people. You think, well, that's great. It is great. But there are two things that are connected to that. The first thing is this. If we're all Christ-centered, then we better get off our duff, our backside, and we better get in this community, and we better start establishing some uh, relationships with people that are exploring Christ, that are just getting to the point where they are asking, what is Christ, who is Christ, and what is he all about? We have to get out into the community to establish those relationships. It also means that we as a church need to establish a pathway of spiritual growth for when those people come into this church that they can understand what Christ did for them and have open conversation and, and go deeper. You see why it's so important for us to identify where we are and who we are. So with that being said, let me just ask you, what category do you think you might fall into? Exploring Christ, growing in Christ, Christ-centered? Uh, which one would it be? Are you further along today than you were a year ago? Well, we'd be hard-pressed to find a better truth that was said by Ben Franklin. It so identifies us as human beings. He said there are three classes of people. 
He said, there are people that are immovable. There are people that are movable. And there are people that are moving. We want to be moving. Uh, Maybe Dr. Seuss really nails it. Of what the responsibility is for us in our spiritual growth. Uh, We grew up with Dr. Seuss. Here's what he said. He says, you have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself anywhere you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know. And you are the one who will decide where you go. I mean, it's on us. It's not on anyone else. So where are you going and how can we help? In the scripture that we have today, Colossians 1, 3 through 6, Paul wrote a letter to a brand new church that was being found in a church known as Colossae. Now, Colossae was a town that is founded in uh, western uh, most Turkey today, modern day Turkey. It was built against the backdrop of a mountain range. Uh, There was a road that was built by the Romans in order for commerce to come and go. Uh, There were towns that were close to it that we're familiar with from reading scripture of Heropolis and Laodicea. But it was a melting pot because of this road of different virtues, different thoughts, different people. It was a booming town. Today, if you go to that place, all you find is a mound of dirt that is yet to be excavated. Paul wrote this letter to that church because that brand new church was full of brand new Christians. The message of Jesus had come. And as it had come, they had accepted it. And as they accepted it, he wrote this letter, a letter of encouragement to them. Uh, It was such a different type of church being all brand new. They would fall into that first category of exploring Christ. It's not like our churches today in America where you come in and you talk to someone and they say, well, I've been a member of the church for 50 years or I've been a member of the church for 15 years. These were all brand new. Brand new folks. So when that's the case and the makeup of the church, the obvious question is what now? I mean, I have made the decision for Jesus. So what now? What's my next step? Uh, Every one of us know that new faith is fragile faith. And there are a ton of people that begin their spiritual journey and they kind of get lost somewhere along the way. Uh, Not everyone who starts well finishes well. So the question of what now was very important for this church at Colossae It's a very important uh, question for us at Get Well. Whatever category we find ourselves, what now? It makes you wonder what Paul would say to this brand new church, these new believers. What's he going to say? Is he going to correct them? Is he going to challenge them? Is he going to advise them? Listen to his words. Hear the tone of his voice. The compassion in his heart. As we look at verse 3 of chapter 1. And hear Paul say. We always thank God. The father of our Lord Jesus Christ. When we pray for you. Because. We have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the love that you have for all the saints. Verse 5. The faith and love and the hope, the three Christian cardinal virtues of our faith right out of the gate. We've heard of the faith, love, spring of hope that is stored up for you in heaven. And that you've already heard about in the word of truth, the gospel that has come to you. Now look at these words. Over all the world, the gospel is bearing fruit. And it's growing. 
just as it's been doing. Where? Among you. Among you since the day you heard and understood God's grace and its truth. Paul was letting them know that they were entering the greatest adventure of their life. Uh, We agree. There's little doubt with Franklin's words of three classes of people, uh, those that are immovable, immovable, and those that are moving. We can grin with what Dr. Seuss says, that we do have brains in our head and feet in our shoes. Uh, We can grin and uh, applaud the the words of Paul as he just applauds the the church at Colossae and say to them, it doesn't matter where you are, I'm just rejoicing that you're in the journey of growing. Those are the words we need to hear this day, that we are rejoicing that I have a desire to know more of God. Jesus kind of wraps it all up. He has a way of putting it so simple. Uh, life in the day of, of Jesus, he was met by a Pharisee one day. And uh, on that, they questioned him in which he was trying to trap Jesus. And he said, what is the greatest commandment? And Jesus looked at him. Something he had said uh, before that part of Moses' understanding. He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and spirit. This is the greatest commandment. Can those words just fall on get well? I mean, is that our desire? To love God with all our heart, soul, mind, spirit? And he said the second commandment is just as important as the first. Love your neighbor as yourself. For on the law and the prophets, all these things hang. I mean, as we start in this process of moving deeper in our spiritual relationship, is it a matter of just checking boxes and going to classes and saying, oh, I've been to that Bible study? Or is it about, I want to know your heart. I want to know you. That when this life is over, I don't want to look back and say, what if? But I want to look back and I want to say, what a life. I gave it my all because he gave his all for me. Will you pray with me? Lord, what a privilege it is to be loved by you. You got it right. We just need to hear it. That if we just will follow you and give our all to you, that the path is so straight, it's so clear. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters in this place as I pray for myself. That when we come to this altar, when we kneel down, we just whisper the words, I want to know you. Forgive us for where we've been or the the place where we are. And a lot of times we kick ourselves because we say, "Uh, I need to be here before I can do anything. That is so wrong. Let us just begin where we are. and Let us have an insatiable appetite for you, for your heart, your love. And it's only as we give ourselves to that process of growing deeper in you. Lord, be present as we come to take these elements. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us clean and help us live this life the best we can that will be a testament of you and your love. It's in the sweet name of Jesus I pray. Amen.